Hello, everyone. My guest today is Sam Cook. He's a former U.S. Army officer and Russian history teacher who founded Sanity Desk to help experts, authors, and coaches build their entire businesses online. He lives in Kiev, Ukraine, and his tech team is based in Poland and Ukraine. Sam, you ready to take us to the top? Ready to go, Nate. All right. So talk to me real quick. What kinds of customers are you selling Sanity Desk to? We're specifically targeting experts, authors, uh, consultants, solopreneurs, people who are just starting their business and are overwhelmed by the tech because the, the tech monster is really, you know, it stops a lot of people from ever getting started, uh, mm -hmm. especially now with COVID. You can't rely on in-person networking. You really have to have your IT set up. Yep. No, that's absolutely true. And so, I mean, can you name a customer or two that people might know? Yeah, uh, Peter Sage just signed up. He's got uh, about a 60,000 person audience. He was actually user number one of Sanity Desk five years ago. He just signed up for the SaaS version of it. He, that was when we were developing our agency. And uh, Marilee Williams, who wrote the book, Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. And uh, David Babalane, who wrote the book, uh, Story, Primary Colors of Story, PhD, and uh, you know, film script story consultant. So uh, not everyone are, are have written a book, but everyone uh, wants to write a book, uh, I think, generally, who, who we're working with and their individual experts, coaches, consultants on their way. To when, did, when did you launch the company, Sam? Launched October 31st of uh, 2019. Literally, I think that was the first day we were we were in business, according to State of Delaware. And how many customers are you working with today? Uh, we have. Just over 50 customers. I think we have about five subscriptions uh, ending their trial today, tomorrow. So we'll be uh, just crossing north of 50 customer mark uh, right now. That's great. And, and what are some of these customers paying you per month on average to use the full tech? Well, we have uh, we have two plans. We have one that's $99 a month, which I think we have nine or 10 users on that. But we're actually mainly only working with people who are willing to pay for the enterprise version, which is $2.99 a month. Uh, it's up to 10,000 users. It has the smart page technology where you can create, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of variations of every page based on user data. And also they get a dedicated tech support rep with that plan because we were, we're using this kind of guided onboarding model, uh, concierge level support to really work out the onboarding process, education, and kinks in the tool as we go through the first hundred users. So, can we multiply two ninety nine a month times fifty? You're doing like call it thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars a month in revenue. Yeah, I think we're at twelve and a half when you average it out between the ten or so lower plan users and most of them on the two ninety nine plan. So, yeah, mm -hmm. twelve and a half, thirteen thousand MRR. And where were you a year ago? Do you remember? A year ago, we had no no revenue. We started selling in. I think we got our first customer end of February and, and, you know, March was really when we started selling in earnest. And where are you driving this growth from? I mean, how are you getting, you know, 10, 20, 30 new customers each month? Well, two places. I had a marketing agency that I built up that had about 100,000 people on its list. We, we had the Story Matters brand, Story Matters Academy. We're getting people coming over from there who are old customers. We're also doing uh, Facebook ads. Um, to warm audiences who've never signed up, but you know, half a million plus people who've seen me on on video marketing for the past three, four years online. Face also, for TV, baby. Yeah, yeah, and then cold traffic, uh, cold traffic through our new Sanity Desk video ads has started to generate some leads. So basically, old agency marketing, new product, they have an affiliate commission as any agency or reseller can get. And then, you know, Sandy Desk just launched its own funnel and Facebook ads. And we're also doing some, you know, LinkedIn outreach. Now, have you uh, bootstrapped the company today or did you raise capital? No, we've raised 450000 in outside funds. Uh, the company bootstrapped the first 700000 as an agency. The agency sold the IP in October of last year. The agency's got about 725000 invested into the company as one of the angels that transferred the IP. And then 450 of outside money's come in since then. So what percent of Sanity Desk does the agency own? I think at a 4.5 million post money valuation uh, on a safe, that's going to put it 20 percent. percent Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, did you own 100% of the agency? Yeah. yeah. 
So, so why deal with that at all? If it's the same owner on both things, why not just say Sam Cook owns that 17% in Sanity Desk? Well, the, the, the one reason was the team at the agency. Uh, you know, I am actually putting two managers uh, in the cap table. Plus, we're going to set aside some of the, the, the cap table for the team. So that part of it is to incentivize the team to do work for Sanity Desk at way, way below market rates because the team there is shareholders. The team also had some past invoices to pay off. Uh, so even if even if I wanted to, uh, you know, shut down that company and roll it into Sanity Desk, they're they're actually handling, you know, obligations which which they're winding down on a monthly basis that that they owe, and the new company has no IP uh, or or debt, you know, no debt. So that was the cleanest way to make the transition. Brand new company, uh, IP transfer. Yep, that all makes sense. Got it. So 450 raised outside agencies put in 750k. When did you raise the 450 from outside angels? It's been since August of last year. Uh, we got our first outside angel who put in 100. Um, five or six more in for 25. Sorry, five more in for 25. Uh, one in for another 100. His brother in for 50, and then I think we got a couple loans. Uh, as, well, we we got a SBA loan, which I call outside capital, but you know that's not equity. Yep. So I think four hundred thousand in angel money, to be precise, plus about fifty from the government. So. And you've used this to obviously reinvest in the team. How many folks on the team today? Fourteen. We have 14. nine in the product. Uh, my partner's chief product officer slash CTO. Uh, even though he's not a developer by trade, he's he's. How many pure and, developers, pure engineers? Five pure engineers, one QA, two design. Any quota carrying folks? Quota carrying? Do you have any salespeople with quota? Oh yeah, uh, I got one sales sales rep, one customer support rep, uh, one hiring officer, one finance person. But they don't all have quota. Just the salesperson. It's a salesperson, and, and I'm the other salesperson. Yeah. So besides you, the other salesperson with quota. What do you set their quota at annually? Um, well, he's on a base plus commission. So basically, uh, he's on a base of a thousand dollar base plus 150 per new sign up, uh, inbound leads and then 250 if he finds them himself. So what, what do you want him though to be closing monthly in terms of new monthly recurring revenue? What's his quota target? 20, 20 per, per customer, 20 per sales rep. That's one deal a working day. Uh, we're also looking for new sales reps to, to kind of increase that. So. Got it. So 20 per day at whatever, $300. No, what, 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 I, I've got 20 per month, one deal a day. Um, as right now per rep, you know, if they speak to three or yeah, four I, people. I understand. I understand. Yeah. So, so yeah, 20 new customers. This one guy who's doing sales for you now, you want him to close 20 new deals, new deals per month at about $300 per month. Yeah, exactly. Which is six thousand a new monthly recurring revenue, or about seventy two thousand dollars in ARR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you? I mean, how do you get that to scale? You need your salespeople to be closing more than that if you're going to go hire and build an army of salespeople. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look, that's where we're initially at. Uh, we need to spend more money on ads. I mean, I think realistically, um, if we were to get uh, you know, right now we're spending about a thousand dollars to acquire a new customer. If we were to have a budget to spend on ads and, you know, some, some float for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, one sales rep, I think I, that's what I think he can close based on what we're, we're bringing in on ads, but one sales rep is really good. If his phone's filled all day, could probably close four deals a day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I could go with one sales rep and then have another one. Um, you know, so uh, we are having about a 30 to 50% close rate of people we speak to and it's a 30 minute call. That's great. And so when you take your fully weighted CAC today, Facebook ads, commissions, a salesperson, all your expenses, what's it cost you to get a $300 a month customer? Uh, well, they pay a 499 upfront onboarding fee. Um, and then 299 a month, uh, we're paying right now about 1250 to acquire a customer. 1250. Got it. So you get 490 of that paid back instantly, which leaves about 800 left to be paid back. That comes in over a three month period. So you got about a three month payback period. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much more can you invest in these channels? They seem to be working. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, it really, it really just depends on optimizing our Facebook ads and, you know, getting the money in. So I think, I think Facebook ads could definitely scale up. I mean, we're, we're taking a global approach. We, 
We got a customer from Italy in. We got a customer from the UK in. We're really not even touching the U.S. market right now due to the election spending. Um, we're we're just we have a, a large global audience. We're used to to working with uh, some South African customers. Spoke to someone from Bangladesh. So I think easily, uh, you know, we could probably go fifty to hundred thousand uh, a month in Facebook ad spend. But I want to scale it up as we make sure as we scale that we're maintaining that customer acquisition cost. I launched FounderPath specifically to help founders like you, early stage SaaS companies, get capital they need without having to sell equity. You chose to do a little deal in there the other day. I saw it. I saw the approval go through. Explain to me sort of how it works and why you did it and what you hope you can do with FounderPath in the future. Yeah, well, look, I know with the 6,000, uh, I think I did, uh, I sold two of my customers. I gave, got an advance for two customers, uh, their ARR, um, annual, annual revenue. Uh, that six thousand dollars. I know that I just up my ad budget. So this month we're going to spend ten thousand on ads versus a more conservative spend of you know four or five, because uh, I know that the way we're operating right now we can you know get those customers in. Uh, you know we we get four ninety nine right away and two ninety nine another seven days later. Um, you know so really. Within 30 days, actually, if I have two payments of 299, we're almost, you know, 150 shy of break even. So I view it as just a way to buy additional customers. I know our onboarding process, very low churn because it's guided right now. We're systematizing our onboarding so we can open up a $99 plan to people who don't afford the 299, start selling that without a sales rep. Um, you know, but we really want to make sure these first customers have a great experience so they can be evangelist case studies. And, and then I think we're really ready to scale ad spend. Yeah. You took two customers paying 300 bucks a month. So 600 bucks a month, a month in MRR. You said founder path, give me, give me six grand for those folks up front. We said, boom, approved. And now if you can take that six grand and spend it and hold your CAC at 1250, right? 1,250, which means you get five, six new customers with the six grand that, that you got from founder path, it becomes basically arbitrage for you. You go back in founder path, your, your, I watch your credit score. Your credit score will go up. You'll unlock cheaper capital and more capital over time. And hopefully IPO is still owning 90% of your company, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at the history of startups, even like a company like Facebook that did it all right and had no down rounds, there's huge dilution. So I think, I think what you're doing, um, you know, once, a founder like me who's got a direct response marketing background proves that they can buy customers. And I've spent a lot of money on ads for clients and have that experience. You know, yeah, it just becomes a game of math. Yep. Sam, on that note, man, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. Favorite business book, I would say Good to Great by Jim Collins. And the reason why is, is simply um, he talks about leadership and how he wanted to have only quantifiable facts in there, but his team almost quit because he wouldn't allow him to put leadership in there, which he couldn't quantify. So I think that's my favorite. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Yeah, look, um, I, I got to admit, I'm, I'm an Elon Musk uh, fanboy because of his uh, big vision and, and purpose behind his uh, what he's doing. I think uh, life's not worth uh, playing small. And, and that's definitely what we're doing with Sandy Desk. No, number four, how, what's your favorite online tool for building the company? You missed three. Number three, same question. Oh, uh, online uh, tool for building the company. Yeah. Well, look, I got to be partial. I use really my own tool, Sandy Desk. Yeah, besides your own. <laughs> uh, online tool to build a company. Honestly, I would say, um, I've just been a huge fan of, uh, of, um, man, that is, that is a really tough question. I'll say right now, you know, Slack, my team's done a great job. That's probably going to be one of the last things we try and replace. My team's done a great job building the culture in there. Great. Number, number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night, Sam? You know what? I, I'm focusing on trying to get seven or eight because I, I've found with fitness and sleep that my productivity is going up. So I used to, you know, thrash myself and sleep a lot less, but I, I think seven or eight is a good and number. What's your situation? Married, single kids? I am single. No kids? Uh, no kids. All right, Sam, and how old are you? I'm 42. 42. Last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Um, I wish I knew when I was 20, uh, the value of, um, you know, I think, I think exercise and sleep. I, I, for 20 years in the army, we used to say sleep when you're dead and 
sleep is for the week. And, and I've really learned that lesson uh, in the last, you know, three, four months hiring a fitness coach and seeing the power of, of actually focusing on your sleep and your fitness for productivity. So guys, sanitydesk.com just passed 50 customers, about $180,000 in terms of ARR. They raised $450,000 to do this. Also used founder path money to start scaling some of their ad spend, hopefully grow the company over time without taking a bunch of dilution. 14 people on the team, five engineers, one quota carrying sales rep, again, helping brands like Peter Sage, right? Grow their businesses without having to go put and staple a bunch of online tools together. Sanity desk does it all. Sam, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it, and the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.